Bruce, you've told me in the past via the channel that most modern bikes are very similar. Would you say that's right? Pretty much, yeah. I'm going to give you a challenge. I'm going to give you three classics to try. How about that? You accept the challenge? Let's do it. Folks, welcome back to the channel. We've got a whisper because it's quite early morning and there's people still asleep around here. This is my mate Matt, who also has a channel I've told you about. The name of the channel is Metamorphic Wonders. That's no spaces, no gaps. Just put it in as I say it. Metamorphic Wonders. I will put links down below. You've got to check out his channel. Anyway, Matt very kindly said, you best come along and have a little look at my dad's toys. Look at these three classic bikes. Now you folk out there keep telling me I don't review any older bikes. Well, here you go. Matt, what do we have? Well, we've got a Matchless 1958. That's a 350cc, single cylinder. We've got a BSA B31 1949. That's a 350cc, single cylinder. And at the back there, we've got a Francis Barnett Falcon 1954 two-stroke, which is the one I'm going to wait and see you on. It's going to be great. I'm going to start this up. If I let you start it and you mess it up, We'll be here for about two hours while we get rid of the flooding. If we break down, or should I say when we break down, we've got the toolkit so we can get going again. So when we break down, we'll be all right. Okay, we're rolling? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're gonna do, before we start it up, we need to we need to prime it. You've got two taps here that turn the fuel on. There's an emergency one on the other side, and there's this one that runs it. Then we have to flood the carburetor by pushing down on the tickler. Do lawnmowers have ticklers? Pee and fuel everywhere. Yeah, we'll do. That's normal. <laughs> Pee, oil and fuel all the time. All right. They're not doing that, they're not right. right. Make sure it's out of gear. Ah, oh, there's decompression here, Bruce. See that thing there? Yeah, yeah. It's like you pull that, you know what a decompressor is? No. It makes a hole in the top of the piston so that the piston ticks over without any compression. So you hold the decompressor down, put your foot on there, and just draw the fuel in, then let your finger off. It's a bit of a gambling match. <laughs> What have I got myself in for? When you run it, just give it a couple of revs here and there. Okay. So it just don't stall. Alright. You know I'm going to stall it. Yeah, you're nervous. No, mate, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Can't uh, wait. Uh, try and keep your speed around 30. Mm -hmm. Don't be giving it. I won't. Alright? Don't you worry. Alright then, folks. That is us. Oh. Right, folks, that is us on the first one of these beasts. We're on the matchless. G3L. It's a little bit of thinking to ride it because obviously the gears are, are totally opposite. But if you just think of it like a race shift, one up, three down, four down, three down, four gears. But that is us. The ride is surprisingly smooth. I thought I was going to be getting vibrated all over the option. But it's not bad at all. Yeah, I'm liking this. I mean, power wise, you're not on a Jigsaw Thaw or anything like that, but it's perfectly adequate. It's comfortable, the seat's lovely. Let me just see what these brakes are like. Yeah, I think it's drum brakes, isn't it, I think. There's no ABS or anything like that on this, so you just got to bear that in mind. But then again, you're not going to be hurtling around at breakneck speeds, are you? It's lovely, I like it. I'm not sure where the GPS is, you know, and the anti-wheelie and your traction control, I don't know where all those settings are, but you know. <laughs> what a cracking way to spend your Sunday. Oh yeah, feel the power. That engine sounds cracking. <laughs> Okay, I was just going to say, where were the indicators? No indicators, hand signals. I'll have to remember this from my cycling proficiency days. Oh. <laughs> That's a beautiful church, that, isn't it? What a bonny cock. I hope this sound is coming out on the, the video, folks. Lovely. Ooh, oh, blimey. 
in the wrong gear now. There we go. There is me saying the gears aren't too bad. I put it into neutral. Oh, boy, mate. Cool. Uh, I think it must be in like fourth or something. It's up, it's up, that's why. That's weird that when you don't think about it, you just go into muscle memory, don't you? Oh, this is all these speed bumps, man. I don't want to crack it over these speed bumps. Genuinely, folks, this is lovely. This is a nice little experience. I'm enjoying this. There's a little bit of brain power needed initially, just because the gear, because of the gears. The gear. Oh, right. So up is first. So up will change down. Gotcha. Now there's no slipper clutch on this either, so it's back to matching revs. I'm trying to have a little bit of finesse, mechanical sympathy. Don't just crunch her in, but at the same time, you've got to be quite assertive. I think is the best word for your uh, your gear use. But yeah, this is good. What's a magneto? Right, folks, apparently this is the first model that didn't have, or doesn't have, a mag magneto. I don't know what a magneto is. This is the first year, not model, first year that doesn't have a magneto. Oh yes, can you feel the power? Right, this is great. <laughs> this is awesome. I don't know if I'd want to go around the UK on one, but for a little trundle on a Sunday morning, this is lovely. I could certainly pop down to the local calf on this. Great fun. Do you know, for general riding, this doesn't feel a million miles away from a modernish bike. And that might sound ridiculous, but for me, it just doesn't. It, it's nice. Suspension feels fine over these roads through the town. Admittedly, we've not taken this into the twists and turns. It feels lovely. And it's not broken down yet either. Woohoo! <laughs> I'll to remember to try and suck in. Man, I'm loving this. This is cracking. <laughs> Hello, Matthew. Is that the light switch? That's the light. Brilliant. I take it this has um, like cornering ABS, cornering daylight, running lights, yeah, all the usual. Well, yeah, you do have to keep like slightly revving it, don't you? Otherwise, it dies. God, a corner. That doesn't feel too bad at all. I mean, I know it's walking pace. What have we got next, Matt? Second one, BSA B31, 1949. <sighs> made by British Small Arms. They used to make rifles in World War II. They also used to make army bikes for the war. Well, this is basically one of them, but a civilian version. Let's show you, show you a bit around. Let's do it. Okay, so. Kickstart, that's your gear stick, same as the other one. Up and down, exactly the same as the other one. Again, brake, clutch, choke. This one is the advance and retard the spark. I'm not gonna go into detail about that because you don't know what a magneto is, do you? <laughs> I don't. So it's irrelevant. I'll talk you through it. There's your brake. Okay, what we got also on these is a toolbox for when you break down. The toolbox is kept in here. You unscrew this with an old penny, you know those big old pennies? Yeah. And inside there, there's a rack of BSA spanners. Looks absolutely fantastic. You're gonna need that, so when you break down, you can get the machine running again. Bosh. We rolling? Yep, cool. Right, okay, one thing I will say about these bikes, just a bit of trivia, is the oil level here is for the entire engine. Whenever you start these up, what you're supposed to do, it's good practice, is unscrew this. Okay, if you look in there, can you get your camera in there? Inside here is the oil. Now what you're looking for is, is the top of this tip. It, it's gonna shoot the oil out, which means it's going all around the engine and it's, it's, it's circulating. If it doesn't come out of this top hole when you started the bike, you stop the bike because you'll seize the engine. So you have to check the oil pump is working by making sure that it's, it's pouring oil out the top of this little shaft. So that's a very important thing. It's a harder one to drive, it's heavier, and the ride is a little bit more uncomfortable, but it's a beautiful machine. Let's see how you get on. So, starting procedure. This, this, when you start it, you put it on S, it slows, the, it, it makes the sparks, when the piston goes up and it comes down, yeah. it sparks, so that it doesn't, as the piston's coming down, it sparks now, rather than now. Because if it sparked there, it'd throw you over the handlebars. 
Gee whiz. So what they do is you, re you retard the spark, so the spark, it goes up, then it goes bang. Bang at the bottom of the stroke, <laughs> rather than the top. You might want to Google that. It's involved, isn't it? When you do the, the video, you can do a talk on how that works. You've just done it. <laughs> Every day is a school day, people. First hit, one shot. Let's see you, Matt. Okay, let's prime it. Decompressor on, choke on. He loves this, folks. He loves this. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Right, folks, here we are. We're out on the second one, which is a BSA B31 from 1949. This one feels a little bit more agricultural than the last one. And as you've probably just seen, it can be a little bit temperamental to start. Go, we might have to play. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. But I'll tell you what, again, really nice, comfortable seat and position. You definitely have to be much more assertive with the gear lever, with the gear selection on this. You can't just hammer it in, but you've got to be a good positive downward push and an upward pull up on the lever but once you've got her moving nice place to be feels really good actually suspension feels lovely just for plodding along seats nice and comfortable bars feel nice and wide that's feel a little bit wider than the last one Matt was telling me see this little knob here that is to stiffen up your, your steering so if you've got a sidecar on the side you can sort of trim your steering for that brilliant these are really enjoyable to write admittedly i think if they broke down you'd probably uh, test your friendship with them but when they're all singing all dancing they're all working happy days oh wow the levers are much stiffer on this <laughs> they're like rock solid <laughs> you definitely have to be using rear brake as well the front's almost non-existent <laughs> These are brilliant, like Harleys, it's all about the experience. And this is a cracking experience. Oh, went for the wrong lever, uh, wrong gear. This is lovely around here, it's all very civilised, isn't it? I feel like I should be in a tweed jacket. Um, not sure about that, mate. <laughs> Matt's just said, could I go around the country on one of these? Uh, yeah, of course, you, you could. You could, but I'm not sure how this would cope, but cope with like sustained, sustained riding. I imagine these are a little bit temperamental. Got him, cheers. Hiya! <laughs> Matt was just saying, folks, this is MOT exempt, tax tax exempt. I was thinking these would be an utter pig. I thought they would be like over the speed bumps and stuff, and in sort of built-up areas, they'd just be an utter pain. But they're not bad at all. It's just it's getting the um, the sort of race shift, the reverse gearbox, getting that into your head. That's about it, really, to be honest, and not relying on that front brake. Like a push bike, you need to be using the rear brake a lot more. Oh gee whiz. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the wrong gear. There we go. It's like the front brake hasn't got enough to stop you. And then you go for the rear the rear brake and you lock it up. <laughs> the little characteristics of this bike are coming to the fore. <laughs> where's the uh, where's the cruise control Matt? D heated grips? Well yeah, this is fine. Absolutely nothing wrong with this. You can't help but smile on this, can you? I mean, if you don't smile round riding one of these, you better check your pulse. You're dead. Right, on with number three. What have we got next, Matt? Okay, Bruce, it's the third one for you to ride. 197, 1954, Francis Barnett, Falcon. Two stroke. Beautiful bike to ride, gives loads of smoke. You're going to love it. Let's see how you get on. Do you want to do it? I'll try it, yeah, I'll try. Right, nice nice kick. 
Just trying to get my leg up that high. Easy, easy, nothing to it. <laughs> right folks, here we go. I am on the Francis Barnett. It's a two-stroke 198cc single cylinder engine. Much, much smaller than the others. Feel a bit wobbly on this when I was pulling away. Very easy to start, I've got to say, although, you know, Matt has kindly started it a couple of times beforehand. Very easy to kick through. There's hardly any compression in the kicker at all. What I love about these bikes is that they get, they get a great reaction off of people. People are smiling, laughing. <laughs> The smell, the two stroke smell. Significantly less grunt than the other two. Actually, do you know what? That's not bad now. Now I've, I've got it into third and she'll motor along okay, not bad. The controls are actually much nicer on this. The clutch is a lot softer. The front brake actually feels like it does something, which is great but it does physically feel a smaller bike. The tank's not as big. I sort of feel like I'm perched up on top of the tank. I'll tell you what, the grin, the grin is no less big. <laughs> Hello. Oh, blimey. Cricky. I couldn't find the rear brake. This one definitely feels a little bit more um, sort of fragile than the other two. You can feel it with being the two-stroke engine. You can feel this shaking about. What's these dials here, Matt? This, is that your head for your lights? So that's to turn the lights on and off. I think all three are a bit like that. They've all got switches at the front there. liberties can't you with, the, with these older bikes you've definitely got to be much more assertive a bit more precise with everything with these shall I get done speeding on one of these that'll be awesome second now it's only got three isn't it three gears yeah oh no I've just stalled it okay right that's our neutral Welcome back folks, right, we've had a few issues, well not we, I have had a few issues with these Just when you're, when you're static you have to keep the revs sort of up And I was letting them die, so we went through about four phases of lights there <laughs> Oh bloody hell, gee whiz Went through about four phases of lights there, um, trying to get the bike kick it over I was pulling the clutch in, you don't pull the clutch in to kick these over But now we're back on We'll be heading back in and we'll have a quick chat with Matt and you can hear a bit about his channel If you, oh, I mean, if you enjoy these sort of classic things, the mechanical stuff Matt is the man to follow So I'll leave links down below and make sure you check out his channel Because it is hilarious Make sure you watch the one where he sets the kitchen table on fire Genius Genius Right, back to base Right then folks, what do you think about that? That's the three bikes that we've been on. Matt, thank you so much for letting me You're try your, your pride and joys. Um, folks, it's an experience. It's a definite experience riding these bikes. It's not as different as I thought it was going to be to riding a modern bike. I mean, it's, it's an engine and a couple of wheels. Suspension for riding around the, the sort of outer London like we've been doing over the speed bumps and stuff, perfectly all right obviously we've not been caning it around in twisties and things but that's not what you do on these bikes they're, they're really nice to to sort of trundle along at it's a lot of fun very engaging you have to put a little bit more thought into it because obviously the the gearbox is the other way around some of them you have to be a little bit more uh, precise precise is a good word some of them you've got to be a bit more precise with your your gear selection and your gear changing uh, and your braking takes a little bit of planning <laughs> for sure because they're non-existent but a lot of fun mate thank you so much you're welcome you did very well thanks very much I'm proud of you um where do people go if they want to see a little bit more about you if you want to see a bit more 
me messing about with stuff, engines, etc. Come to my channel, Metamorphic Wonders. <laughs> will it appear? It will. <laughs> come and see me and uh, see what I get up to. I, I mess about with loads of stuff. Come and have a look, it's brilliant. Beautiful. You heard what Matt says, folks. Honestly, go there. I'll leave a link down below to his channel. I'll leave a link to setting the table on fire. It's hilarious. Make sure you check it out. Give him a like, a follow, a subscribe, all the rest of it. So, folks, hope you enjoyed that one. Remember, keep on doing your thing. Get on out there, look after those that you love. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha!